Rona, how's it going aside from, you know, dealing with the media people rushing to get through their questions with you? Uh, all is good. All is good. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere and we're having, a, it's a beautiful spring day. So, um, yeah, happy times. How's everything going up there? Are you, I assume you're in the Northern Hemisphere somewhere. Yeah, New York, you know, what can you do? The, the elite nice. people that keep you all down. But uh, Hounds of War, new movie. When did you actually film it? 20... <laughs> uh, was it last year or the year before? I, you know what? I can't remember. No, all a blur. Last year or the year before. If uh, the next journalist was to start quoting movie lines at you, is it so long ago that you wouldn't be able to recognize that those are your lines? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that aside, I'm assuming pleasant memories, are like challenging role, but pleasant memories, great cast and crew. You're talking about, would I remember lines from this particular movie? Correct. Like I, I'm ah. assuming the answer is no, but you go, but you know what? There's still some text threads going on. I enjoyed it. No, no, no. I wouldn't remember from this movie, but I would remember from some other movies just because they've become sort of like memes and things like that. Um, no, no, from this one, it was also very quick. It was so quick. And it was in a really strange time. I think we were still all, I just seem to remember there still being a little bit of post-COVID-ish stuff going on. It was all a little bit, you know, I think there was still masks. You know, it was in that weird, hazy time where I think we're all, we were all, and that's why I can't really remember if it was last year or the year before, because I feel like everything was still getting back. So, so that tells me it was probably the year before last. Anyway, um, yeah, no, all good. I mean, the whole experience, amazing, amazing crew, shooting in Malta, super fun, incredible stunt team, lots of like sort of, you know, uh, ass kicking and, you know, sort of what I love to do. Yeah, you've uh, forged an interesting path within the action world. When did you kind of realize that that was going to be a long term as opposed to a one off for you? Oh, I, I, I think I'm only just realizing it um, because to get a phone call when you're nearly 50 and say, do you want to just come and step on set with really sage uh, fighting experts? And can you kind of pick up the choreography with less than 24 hours to do so, which has happened a couple of times in the last couple of years. I'm like, Oh, you're calling me because I do that thing. And I'm like, I'm there was a point in time, and I remember years ago, I think I was at Comic-Con for something. It could have been Underworld. And somebody said to me, aren't you worried that you're going to get, you know, typecast for life? And I was like, worried about what? <laughs> worried about what? And they're like, that now you're, you know, you'll be the act, you'll, you know. And I started, you know, I would did an album for Lara Croft when I was 19 before, you know, at a time where people were turning their noses up at, computer games, you know, turning in, you know, being movies. And now you've got Pedro Pascal and every casting director that told me, no, no, we can't possibly have somebody who's a pixelated character be a real life character. I'm like, where are you at now? Where are you at now with that? Because uh, it seems to be like, you know, that maybe I was slightly ahead of the curve on that one. Um, and I just really love those strong characters. And I, 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 I guess that when you can play those characters, I think plausibly, I think that people, you know, and it's always the fans, it's always the audience that will say, we believed you. It doesn't really matter whether or not anybody else does it, but it matters if the fans believe you. And if the fans believe you, I think that people pay attention and you get brought back to do it again, um, is my guess. That reminds me of a thing that you posted on Instagram a couple days ago, that great uh, Dr. Alejandra Klein post where you go, uh, it's funny how they cast me because I'm of these nationalities to play a person of these nationalities. So it sounds like your whole career has been breaking the rules or the expectations organically without even trying. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I, but I think that we all do have done that. I just think that only in the last few years, the wall has gone up where you, you know, now it's like you have, you can only be cast because you are that thing, <laughs> which is, which is, which is absurd. You know, we need someone Latino. We need someone 
gay we need somebody it's like it completely destroys the whole principle and craft uh of 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 art and creativity and acting and creating and directing and 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 and, and magic <laughs> which is what we do so i think that we all we all used to do that we all used to break boundaries and cross lines and put on suits of you know people from different backgrounds religions and races and and all of that because that's what we're trained to do that's actually our job it's actually what we're and there's no kind of like wow you did that it's like that's actually what we're supposed to be doing um and anything else is actually just putting on a costume and doing what you were which isn't acting there's no skill in that you know, hiring somebody who is already, it, it, and then it's like, oh, there's somebody who is, in this case, you're talking about being Latina Jew, and I'm Catholic Indian Irish on paper. Um, wow, she can play that? What? How incredible. I just happen to have dark skin, and so I physically look plausible. And there's nothing else to it other than being a human being. Um, and I think that's the bottom line. It's like, we're all human beings, and we have... We're all made up of the same stuff. Actors just tap into various different frequencies depending on the role. It's nothing phantasmagorical. It's just the job. It's just a job. And as you pointed out, it's just magic as well. But the the last question before I let you go, and I say yet again, congratulations, the hounds of war, is do we know where we're going to be seeing you next? Or do we just have to keep checking your Instagram to find out the latest and the greatest? Well, I don't really post that stuff on Instagram in case you hadn't noticed. It seems like you've had, yeah, I, I, you know, I, my life, I've, I've put so much focus into thing, other things in the last few years that are, have sort of taken a Your different sort of front. For example. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different front and center. I, you know, I, you know, I stepped aside and I left, uh, I lived in, in Hollywood for, for, you know, nearly 20 years. And since I've put my energy into actually doing things that I really care about, that really matter, um, I feel that I'm in a stronger space to step back, in, step back into the world of, of a creative, you know, performance. Um, but in a way that I choose what I want to do. And it's, I wish that I could choose everything. I'm, I don't have the luxury, but I do get to choose with by working with people that I like. And it's people that I know in, in environments that I know away from Hollywood, which is a different system where I get to turn up on a set in Malta, work with a different crew, all from Malta and from Italy and from Bulgaria, people that, and learn and grow about it. And different, I love that, the cultural experience, the being able to travel, you know, all of that is a big part of the job for, for me. So um, I think the next thing, I'm up in is Red Sonia, but it's only a, you know, I, that's a wink and a wiggle. MJ Bassett's an old friend of mine. I worked with her on Strike Back. She called me in and said, you want to come and play with the family and do what you do, which is kick ass. So I did that. And um, the next one is TBD. So um, you'll find out before me, probably. <laughs> well, congratulations. I, I'm too, I've got my elbows. I'm, I'm, I'm elbow deep in horse shit right now. So, you know. <laughs> But uh, thank you for taking the time and really looking forward to what's next, whether it's actually doing good in the world or, you know, hurting people on camera. Thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Outrocast. Diamond, Michael, a pleasure to be speaking with you both. First question, Michael, besides how are you, does anyone get to call you Mike or are you Michael to everybody? Uh, you could call me Mike. You could call me Zegan. Um, it's it's actually yeah. I, I swap them for me. It too. doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm I'm good. It's all they're they're all my name. So whatever you feel like. Yeah, Mike, Michael, Zegan. <laughs> I'm good with whatever. Zegan. Spike. I used to be called Spike in fourth grade. Spike. Yeah, right. that in, was short lived. Jersey. Jersey. Yep. Yeah. Sounds like a Jersey thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Simon, throwing it to you here. How did you and Michael first connect? I actually was introduced to him through um, another actor that's in the film, uh, Michael Cavino, uh, who plays Jed. And uh, I think you guys shared an agent. Yeah, we yeah, shared, shared an agent. An agent. And um, Mike Cavino, there's a lot of Mikes in this movie. He's Mike. I'm Michael. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there uh, was on board, and you know, I was I, I was having trouble finding the you know perfect person to play this part. And you know, I think it was a bit of a probably a a pipe dream to you know you I think you were, you were you were just kind of at the height of Maisel fame so yeah, I, I was think too it was, famous no, no, no but I just think it was really hard for a first time director to kind of get 
Um, I mean, it's one of the biggest shows on TV ever, so it was a it was a big deal for me, and and Cavino really helped uh, introduce us. So. Well, we're going to come back to that in a second, right. but did you know outright that you wanted to direct it after writing the screenplay? I did, yes. He's a director. I mean, that's, that's what he, you know, yeah. that's his passion. Yeah, for sure. I, that, was, that was never in, there was nobody else that was going to direct this. <laughs> well, sometimes you find that people go, I'm the person to write this and produce this. Sure. I want to delegate the whole thing so I can get a second thing off the ground at the same time and not have to deal with the directing. Definitely. Um, yeah, I know I have a lot of friends who are kind of just writer producer hats only. Uh, I'm probably too much of a control freak yeah. for lack of a better word. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, and I just, you know, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I see it a certain way, especially when you write it, I think you see it one way and you as the director, when the script comes from you, you, you're, you're trying to, to get as close to that image that's in your mind's eye as possible. And, uh, I think that, yeah, that's, that's the answer. <laughs> that, that is a fantastic answer. And something that I noticed that both of you have in common is having so many New York related projects, but it's always gritty, non pretty New York. Have you noticed that? No. Uh, Mar 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 is beautiful. <laughs> Not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> if we, okay, if you look at some of the apartments that you're holed up in, the organized crime, the bad nightclubs. Okay. The They're pretty beautiful, though. I, well, I, 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 no, fair, I get what you're saying. So it's like the grit of them, but yeah, I think we're looking at the set design. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, there's an authenticity to and, and a rawness, I think, that you're always trying to capture with New York. At least, you know, for me, I'm a transplant. I've been here for 15 years now, but, yeah. you know, I still feel like with this movie, too, you know, we shot on film to kind of capture some of that slick and grit. And uh, so you could feel the texture of the city. So that was that was important. <laughs> I yeah, know. I mean, Maisel is you know I, I'm thinking of it in t like you said yeah. the sets that were built because you know we mostly filmed on uh, in these studios with with these in incredible production designers and 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 this uh, we also had incredible <laughs> production designers but they didn't build you know nightclubs or anything yeah. like or our apartments we actually filmed in these empty kind of disgusting apartments. <laughs> But adding to that one, Mike, I mean, Rescue Me, one of my favorite shows of all time. Oh, Not cool. exactly Happy New York either. Borderline no. Empire was like borderline Jersey-ish, but also not Happy New York. And then, you know, looking right. at your stuff, Simon, you know, How To with John Wilson, one of my favorite recent shows. Not exactly the happiest New York either right there. You're right. You're right. You called this out. Yeah, yeah that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just one of many, you know, field producers on that show, which is an amazing thing. So I, you know, but yeah. <laughs> the, the, the cool thing is, especially about this movie, is that I feel like, and, and I felt like this from the time we, were, we started filming, was that this is the kind of movie that you can look back on in like 20, 30 years and, and, and see the city, you know, for what it was. Um, kind of like uh, Dog Day Afternoon or um, uh, Midnight Cowboy, you know, uh, those classic New York films. And I, I felt like, especially because we filmed on 35 millimeter, yeah. um, that we, we really we got can, that. Yeah, we captured, I mean, we, and we canvassed the city. I mean, we shot in all five boroughs. I mean, we, subways, taxis, buses. Yeah, we, we stole a lot, a lot of shots. Yeah, we stole a lot of shots. Park, bridge, I mean, everywhere. I mean. Roosevelt yeah, Island? Yeah, we Roosevelt had Island. Island. I, I forgot about In that. an abandoned yeah. hospital. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was, I know which hospital that is. Yeah. Um, other side of the bridge right there. That's wow. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so to, you know, answer rhetorically, all of it was filmed in New York. This wasn't an Atlanta set showing New York in any no, part. No, 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 no. Not, everything was on location in New York City. Every shot of this movie. Well, that's fantastic. But another <laughs> fantastic thing is you proved me right that comedians are amazing actors, hence Robert Klein. Oh, um, yeah, oh, yeah. Whose idea was that casting? Because He's not done a lot of dramatic roles. I, I, I think you in the intro. Yeah, yeah I had met him uh, years ago. I had we. He came to a play that I was in with a, a friend of mine who's friends with him, and uh, we went out to dinner afterwards. And and that was, I mean, that was like you know, ten, twelve years ago, and and that was so thrilling because I was I was always a fan of his. Um, and so when when I remember we were talking about who could play this this father character and and he just popped up in my yeah, head I mean, and so I contacted my friend who contacted him and he said he'd do it. I was a very lucky benefactor of that relationship because he's amazing in the part. And he was so good. He, he was so good. By the way, he he knew all his lines. You know, he's he's super sharp. Didn't yeah. miss a beat of anything. And and yeah. I've worked with you know older actors before and and um, the fact that he he came fully prepared. Um, it was a long day too. It was like a 13, 14 hour day, I think. Oh, yeah. It was a big day. And yeah. he was really 
he never lost a beat. Yeah. No, and he, we loved hearing his stories. You know. Yeah. Um, he had a good time. I think he had a great time. He did. Yeah, yeah. He's really close with one of our producers now, Wyatt. Oh, really? They were dry. <laughs> he would drive him from uh, oh, right, 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 yeah. Bronx to Westchester in the morning. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a real privilege to have him on with us. Rudely, rudely interrupting you. Did I hear you correctly? He was only on set for one or two days. He knocked it out that quickly. I think yeah. it was two, two days. Two days. Two or three, actually. Two, two or if we did, because we, we did had, the air the air conditioning shot was the second day. Two plus three days. Two so two two and a half. Let's go two and a half days. Yeah, I think so. Um, wow. I mean, yeah. No, it was two. It was two and a half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we have well, to move. Great yeah. stuff that comics can act, and you know, go, going back to the whole rescue. But movie. He, he's also, he's also a he went to the Yale School of Drama, so it's not like, you know. He's an amateur or anything like that. He's a pro. And he's been in a lot of plays. He's been in movies. You know, he's a, he's a But pro. yeah, for sure. I think he's just, he's known for the stand-up right. and, and doing Tonight Show stuff in the 70s fame and all that, which is amazing. So, but yeah, I mean, he's, but he'll, he, he'll also be the first to tell you that he, I think he told me this, that he was, his stand-up special on HBO was like the first one um, that yeah, they've oh, ever they've done. done back in the day? Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Did he whip out a harmonica at any part during the filming? What's that? Did he whip out a harmonica? Yeah, I didn't even know he plays harmonica. I didn't know he plays harmonica. No, I don't think so. Not that I no. No, he, was, he didn't. He didn't bring. We didn't his have harmonica. time for that. We did move quick with him. Yeah, <laughs> we were battling the sun. We didn't. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. He was supposed to be like the first rock and roll comic, and I remember that there was a special where he was going to have a blues band behind him, and you don't quite think of Robert Klein harmonica blues, but apparently. <laughs> Okay. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe he'll perform at yeah, the premiere. Yeah, we'll see if we can get him out. <laughs> uh, so this is a new film to us. You know, it's still not out for a week and a half or something like that. But, Simon, are we allowed to know what's next for you? Because, face it, new project to us, old project to you in a way. Uh, yeah, I have. I, I mean, there's a few projects that I am uh, where w announcements will come soon. But, yeah, there's a few things that have been in the hopper and um, – you know, we're really excited, uh, you know, for this production company and this distribution company too, which is, you know, this is a kind of self-release, yeah, Whiskey Creek, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, with my partner, Gordon Hayward, who's the NBA all-star. And uh, yeah, we have, a, we have a lot coming up on our slate and um, yeah, we're just, we're very excited looking ahead. Hopefully there are parts for me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was actually going to be the follow-up question because when we look at your IMDb, Mike, we see some big stuff ahead. The question was, would there be a collaboration with Simon? It sounds like you're open to it. Uh, I'll have to think about it, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, we, we, we beat him up pretty hard. But I'll, you know, uh, I love it. Yeah, we I am it, sort yeah. of still scarred from this uh, experience, <laughs> but no, I was for sure. I, I, I loved working with Simon. I loved working with this whole crew, and I imagine yeah, your I next project, you would probably oh, get I, the band back together. For sure, yeah. I think that's what made this movie special. We had such a kind of tight knit family pulling something off like this, like an Indian New York, where you're kind of limited resources, limited time. It was it hard. <laughs> this was hard. It really was. You know, uh, we were we were dealing with, uh, like I said, the weather, you know, this all takes place over one day. It's supposed to be the hottest day of the year. Some days it rained. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Yeah. You know, and we were also dealing with, with Casey Bella Suarez, who's 10 years old, and we had to deal with her hours and, and her tutoring. And, you know, sometimes I'd be uh, acting against, uh, you know, she wasn't there, so I'd be acting with a tree. Um, <laughs> it was hard, but, but and we're so proud of it. Yeah. And, uh, and we're proud to get it in theaters because it was filmed on 35 millimeter. So, you know, th the goal was to have it on the big screen, and that's what yeah, we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, one Perfect. question for each of you, and then I let you roam free to the next journalist who asks you the same questions over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> first one to you, Simon. Uh, so I'm speaking with Casey Bella tomorrow. Uh, how did she first appear on your radar? So we actually, um, we read a bunch of different kids. So we had like kind of a large, my casting directors put together, I mean, we might've had over a hundred, 200, I don't have the number, but it, yeah, at least a couple hundred kids that had submitted for the part. It's the <laughs> 200, truth. 300, no, maybe no, there, there, It was like, I remember yeah, I mean, a lot. they were just coming in constantly. But uh, I mean, I think I said this the other day to you, the second Casey came on screen, it was, I didn't even need to watch the end of the tape. I can't really describe that feeling, but when you know, you know. And uh, it was, a, there's Anna. And it was just, that was it. And, you know, when I met her in person and we talked more, that was just, it was confirming what I felt. So uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> the last question going to Michael, uh, big fan of Maisel, as 
everyone in New York is. When you have a role where a line is set at you a lot of times, the rest of your life when you're a known actor, people use that in public. I'm curious if people call out soups to you all the time, that people try and offer you soup all the time. Soup? Why soup? The whole character just kept getting yelled soups that his mother had available in the, like, the last two seasons of the show. Wait, what? My character? I'm trying to think too. Soup in the your mom in the show. I'm trying to remember. Oh, with with my mother, Caroline Aaron. She, yeah, she just kept saying, "Joel, we have chicken noodle soup." In oh, oh, that right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, <laughs> they, mostly people just call me Joel. You know, not Michael, Mike, or Zegan. They call me Joel, and I'm fine with it. Yeah, there's it's, a lot of Joel online on our, like, we have the yeah. trailer running and there's a million comments for Joel. I was, I was walking down the street two nights ago and, and uh, this girl, um, she, she looked at me and smiled and she goes, Joel. And you know what, I'll take it because uh, at least, yeah, you know, great. they love the show and, and Joel isn't such a bad name. It could be a lot worse, <laughs> you know. I could have been boner from growing pain. So, you know, <laughs> at least it's not that. Yeah, it's, I'm just Joel, which is great. Well, thank you both for your time. Congrats on Notice to Quit. And really looking forward to both of your future projects, even if it's not in gritty New York. <laughs> thank but you. But it is, much. unfortunately, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Outro cast. Casey Bella, how is your day going aside from doing interviews today? <laughs> my day is going actually great, and the interviews are the highlight of my day. And it's a very, like, nice day, considering it's like fall is starting. And the weather is doing pretty nice, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> So before I ask you about Notice to Quit, does anyone get to call you Casey or are you Casey Bella to everybody? Well, some people call me just like Casey Bella by my full name, but like my friends and people that know me really well call me Bella. Oh, okay. Is the Casey Bella when you're getting in trouble, that's the parents, like the full name thing? Well, I think for when I'm getting in trouble, they go Casey Bella Suarez to call me down the stairs, and that's how I know I'm in pretty deep trouble. <laughs> now I know. Well, congratulations on Notice to Quit, and I had the pleasure of speaking with a co-star and the director and all that yesterday, and when I asked the director, I said, how'd you find Casey? Or I said Casey Bella in that interview. You're not in trouble uh, he said, you were one of a couple hundred people who auditioned and you didn't even need to finish. He knew that was you. Did you know that that audition had gone so well when it was going on? No, not really. I mean, I watched over that self tape and before I sent it and I was really proud of myself. I mean, I really saw myself in that character and I saw myself doing that character. But I know that like whatever happens, happens. And like, I think a few weeks had passed and then I got a call back and then I met Simon and he was so nice and gave me lots of notes, but never did I expect that I would actually get the role. <laughs> and um, it was my first lead role or like hearing about that I got myself into a lead role. And I was really excited. I was bawling and crying and Oh, gosh, I hope no one ever sees me in that state again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very heavy role, you know, yeah. without spoiling too much of the movie. You know, parents that are fighting, one of the parents going through a lot of trauma, a daughter that kind of doesn't know where that they stand, all in the midst of a very, very hot summer day. What were you able to draw experience from? Because it seems like in reading up the best I could about you, it seemed like you have a pretty good life for an actress. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, it's just, I think the thing that helped me connect most to Anna was her personality. Her personality is literally me, but in a different universe. Like, she's sarcastic. Um, she's funny. I'd like to say I'm pretty funny. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think so. We've seen your comedy chops in another movie, which we'll talk about, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> um, she's very sweet. And... She's very honest, I'd say. And I'm a very honest person, too. She will say whatever's on her mind. Um, if she wants to go see her dad, she will definitely go see her dad. She will get whatever she wants. And I think just me putting myself in that character was so easy for me. And I think that's just, like, like what made the movie more me, I guess. <laughs> Had you filmed in New York before? Uh, I don't think so. Not in, like, the hot New York streets. No, I have not. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Because the first movie that I saw you in the Netflix Sandler movie, mm -hmm. let me tell me if I have the title right. You were so not invited to my 
bat mitzvah. Am yes. I missing a word there? You it, are so it, not invited to my bat mitzvah, yes. Yeah, it's a hard name to say. Uh, so I'm glad I got it correct. That yeah. was filmed in Toronto, right? Yeah. Toronto. But that was pretending like that was in New York. Because mm -hmm. it was her dream to be in New York, like her bat mitzvah. So yeah, it was funny. So that was pretending to be in New York, but it was in Canada. But this was really New York and filmed in New York. Yeah, it was definitely different. The experiences were different if it was fake New York and real New York. It was not really adding up. <laughs> yeah, so in filming, you know, amongst hot weather and not beautiful apartments, as we see towards the beginning of the movie there, did you at least get to experience beautiful New York as part of the filming shoot? Definitely. I mean, even the sunny days were beautiful, but I think the only bad part about sunny days is it was so humid and sticky, but that's what the, made the movie it is. And at some point, it got a little cold because we were filming throughout August to like beginning of October. So it would get like a little cold and chilly and they had to start spraying sweat on me. And obviously I couldn't like wear a jacket over that. So I'd be like this offset when they weren't filming. And I just felt so sticky. But at least when people are watching the movie, they can tell that it's a summer day. So, yeah. Had you been familiar with any of the cast before landing the role in Notice to Quit? Um, I had never like really watched Michael in Marvelous Miss Maisel, but my mom had watched it. And even before Zoo or anything, hearing about Michael, my mom loved Miss Maisel. And I would go downstairs, she'd be like binge watching that show with herself, like eating popcorn in like the corner of the couch. And she was like, no, you can't watch this, go back upstairs. I was like, huh, okay. And then once I finally saw that Michael was gonna be in the movie with me, my mom was freaking out. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was just, I was just watching your show the other day. And I was like, mom, chill you're embarrassing myself but yeah it was really funny <laughs> so now are you allowed to watch it or do you have to wait a few more years to watch mrs Maisel? now i'm allowed to watch it <laughs> got it having worked with the guy where you see um he's not really a funny character in mrs Maisel. E even though he starts off as a comedian he's kind of a serious character around a bunch of quirky funny people but in speaking with michael yesterday i see he's very funny is he able to, the second they go cut, is he funny or does he take a while to come out of character? He is very funny, but he, he could stay in his character like in between scenes, but like during lunchtime or offset when we're just talking like regular mom or not mom, dad and daughter, we, you can, I don't know. He gave me very, like very good dad advice. And he said a lot of like dad jokes that weren't the funniest but he definitely like seemed to me like he was a father figure to me and he gave me like the best advice on everything really and what to say to Simon like if Simon was going all over the place and so crazy and everything and I wasn't like doing my best he'd be like you're doing very good like just like keep going there's only a few more hours and then you could take a big nap and it's okay and I was like it's okay I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And all thanks to him, I think that he just made the movie like really the daughter and dad bond just even more special. Outro cast.